The classic advice you always hear when someone asks you how to learn web development or coding is to just build some project, build something you want. And I 100% agree with this. When you go in and you do a tutorial, I think tutorials are super helpful, especially if you're new and you've never really done anything. Starting from zero, you definitely want to have that kind of guiding tutorial to take you up. But once you get to the point where you sort of know what's going on, I think that a real project forces you to get deep into it and it forces you to confront what you don't know. I've gone through this many times, many other people have, and there are many other fantastic videos that go deeper into this. So today, instead of spending more time on talking about that, because frankly, other creators have covered this better than I will, I wanted to go through three different app ideas at a very high level, how I might build them, some of the features that they need, would need, and a lot of the challenges that are going to come along with them. These are by no means validated business ideas. They're just kind of things that I personally would like, but I'm not going to get around to building. But I can guarantee you that if you follow through with these, you will learn a ton. And from my experience, most projects, when you start out on them, they're one thing, but by the time you get deep into it and you really start to understand it, it turns into something completely different. So if you really follow these things through, they could turn into something really special, you never know. But before that, I wanna quickly talk about something that will help you build this video's sponsor, Upstash. Upstash is a serverless data platform with Redis, a vector DB, queues that I'm currently using in production. Their rate limiting SDK is a must have for any project to protect you from the ongoing nightmare of DDoS attacks, and their vector DB is one of the best I've ever used. Check out Upstash from the link in the description and don't forget to tell them that I sent you. Okay, I just finished recording this video and the three ideas turned out great. Definitely stick around for that. But I think before we get into that, there is some important context I wanna add and kind of talk about what the journey, at least for me, was like going from having no idea what was going on and basically being self-taught on at least web development from, I mean, it was really in the course of about three years. I started doing web development in about, I think it's like 2021. I remember doing tons of different tutorials from Net Ninja and Fireship and all these different creators. And it got me to a very good point. And like I said in the intro, I think it's really important to go through. And if you have no idea what's going on, definitely start with a tutorial. Definitely go through, get the foundations working. But once you kind of have those foundations and you know how to you know how to start up an app, you know how to read to the database, you kind of get what's going on. I think that's when you need to throw yourself into the fire and really try and build something real. For me, the biggest project I built to date is definitely Insider Viz. This has been an ongoing project for about two years now. It's gone through dozens of iterations. I built the back end at least 20 different times. The front end has been built, I think, about three times now. It's been a massive project and I've learned a ton from it. I think very fundamentally, I'm only where I am today because I built this project and the numerous other kind of real projects I've built. It's just that this one got the furthest. And that journey of going from not really having any idea what was going on to being able to build what is obviously not like the greatest site ever built, but I think that this is definitely a decently complex site and it is a very complicated backend because we have to do a lot of work parsing data from the SEC and a bunch of different data sources. You know, a lot of technical work has gone into this and it's forced me to learn a ton of different things. All the different things I talk about in these videos and I've talked about on this channel for the last year and a half, two years, they all just kind of come from the things I'm working on and the things that I just run into. I wasn't out there looking to try and figure out the different ways to do data fetching in SvelteKit. It just is something I kind of had to figure out. I was working on the new version of Insider Viz and we needed to find a way to kind of optimize and speed up the page load for like our company pages because we have to send down a ton of data and that's kind of how I learned about the streaming system and how we can get all that stuff done and then we also needed to go through and add some more complicated stuff to our authentication and that's how I've gotten deeper deeper into Superbase auth and I've gotten deeper into kind of figuring out how layouts and stores work and another great example of this is like SQL and stuff like that. I didn't really seek out to learn SQL, but I've gotten to the point where I'm super comfortable doing joins, doing uh, more complex data models, dealing with indexes, managing different database environments, because I've had to do these things. I've been in the app and I'm working on a page and I'm like, crap, I need to get this data down from the database. And the only way I can do that is by joining these two tables together or having an abysmally slow query. So I just have to go read about it. I go read the docs, I play with it and I figure it out. And that's how I learn things. That's how you go from not having any idea what's going on to just building stuff. I think the biggest thing you need to do is kind of take it one day at a time and just kind of let the lessons come to you, if that makes any sense. I know that sounds a little weird, but let the app and the product and the thing you want kind of drive what you're working on, especially once you get past the basics in the tutorial. 
the way I figured out the things I need to learn is just kind of by needing to go figure them out. And they often just spawn rabbit holes and then I get really interested in something and I go learn more about it. And this whole thing is just a very positive cycle of just learning more and more stuff. And eventually you end up with something really cool. So that's kind of the message I wanted to stick in before this. Obviously, now we're going to jump to the three ideas. I think there's a lot of good stuff there, so definitely stick around. And if you're enjoying it, make sure you like and subscribe. So the first idea I wanted to talk about would be a database companion. This is something that I've really wanted for a long time, and I haven't gotten in any real database product except for Supabase. Supabase has something like this, which is really nice. They're kind of built-in database table editor studio where you can go in and view all of your different tables. You can execute SQL queries in here. You can do a bunch of stuff like that but a lot of database providers don't provide these. The best example of this would be RDS. Um, AWS's database offering, at least in my experience, has been not particularly pleasant to work with. So it would be really nice to have this kind of system where you can go in, you can log in, you can load in your DB, you can explore like a nice table view, kind of like what I just showed with uh, Supabase or with like kind of Table Plus here, which is kind of a good example of a client that sort of exists here. Um, but I think that there's definitely a way to make something that's even better than Table Plus to really get into kind of the index side of things, which is something that I found to be lacking in all of these different services. But I think that there is a lot of room here to build something that has a really great interface for indexes and query profiling. I think the only database that I've seen that's really done this well is actually PlanetScale. They've eliminated their free tier. I've moved all my projects off of it, and I think a lot of people have as well. Uh, it's a good company, an incredible database, genuinely one of the best I've ever worked with. And they have these really nice internal tools on their database that make it super nice and easy to use. And it would be really sweet if someone could build a piece of software where I could just load my AWS RDS instance, which we have one for Insider Viz, that's what you're looking at here, and get a nice visualization of our indexes, get an LLM pipeline for generating the queries, also have an LLM pipeline for kind of running queries and testing them, almost like kind of a code sandbox, almost like kind of a workbench type thing within the editor for testing out queries. I think there's a lot of different things you can do here to really make a nice experience. But admittedly, this is going to be one of the more difficult ideas we talk about here. The key challenge here is that the UI is going to be a lot of work. Building out a UI like this that is um, even remotely responsive, that is super dynamic which with a bunch of different columns, there are a lot of different libraries out there which can help with this. A very popular example of this, at least in the React world, is AG Grid, where you can go through and build out these really nice tables or you can just do them fully custom. Another thing that's gonna be really important here is you need to safely store your user's database credentials. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do that, but you really wanna make sure that those are properly encrypted and stored and secured and you don't have a data breach. Leaking customers' production database credentials is a nightmare that I would not wanna deal with, so this would be priority number one for this app is really figuring out how to do that right and then also figuring out a clean way to be able to use those credentials on your back end to pull the information out of the database. I guarantee you, if you got deep into this project, you would become a SQL expert. You would learn so much about how to work with indexes, how to manage database connection strings, how to just manage tables and stuff like that. It would definitely turn you into a SQL god. So if you're looking at kind of going down a career in that direction, I highly recommend this one. And I also think that there's a real opportunity here if you're interested in kind of the LLMs and the RAG type stuff. I know that this has sort of fallen out of favor. The AI hype train is kind of falling apart, rightfully for a lot of reasons, but I do think that there's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. And ultimately you could potentially create a really good user experience with this. I'm not certain what that would look like because honestly I haven't seen it yet, but I do definitely think there's something there with being able to interface with your database, using these kind of LLMs to create queries for you. There's definitely something there. The next one I want to talk about is going to be a self-hosted chat app. This is something that I've kind of wanted. I've gone back and forth on whether or not I want to build this. Um, I think it would be really cool to go through and build out some application that is self-hostable. I think this would be a really good open source type project where you go in and you build out a core backend server layer, which you can provide as like a Docker image or just the source code for your users to download and host on their own machine or on like a Raspberry Pi or something like that in order to allow them to have their own private chat servers from this service. This would be a really, really good project if you want to get into kind of like the uh, more heavy backend language world, like a Golang or a um, C Sharp and .NET type thing. I think this would benefit a lot from using those heavier languages for the backend because one of the biggest things you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to make it a nice real-time messaging app. So you're going to want to use WebSockets. You're going to want to use all these different things. So having a more... Um, 
having a higher performance backend makes a lot of sense here. And I think that this is a very good use for these kind of dedicated backend languages. So really what I'd want to see feature wise here is want to have a nice web and mobile client, which if you could build both of these, you would learn a ton from that. Um, React Native is a really good experience. I've been working with that for Block. Uh, it has a learning curve for sure, and mobile dev has a lot of things to it that are just deeply painful and kind of suck. Uh, web is a lot more pleasant, but I think that for an app like this, it would be a huge benefit to have something like that. Um, I would want to see it be super simple and well documented to be able to host this wherever you want. Obviously, you need to be able to log into the self-hosted image and connect up to the server and have your friends send messages back and forth. And then finally, I think a really cool thing to add in here would be like an end to end encryption type thing, like have this basically be a self hosted messaging box that you can put wherever you want. I think the whole thing would be really sweet, but I do think that the challenge in this would be, of course, the UI uh, documenting and managing a self hostable image would not be a particularly easy task. And also going through and doing the end to end encryption stuff and really making this whole thing work would not be an easy process. But again, by going through this process, you will learn so much stuff. And for the last idea, and probably the one I should have opened with, is definitely going to be the easiest and simplest one. And honestly, if you're super new and you're just trying to build something for your portfolio and really kind of get some experience shipping code into the real world, this is probably the best place to start. And that would be with just a basic CRUD app for whatever your main hobby is. For me, that's like weightlifting and going to the gym and stuff like that. So going through and building out a weights tracker, a lot of these things are going to be very derivative. There's going to be a lot of these for different things. Obviously, the first two apps were not anything super special or unique or unheard of, but they're definitely along the lines of things that I would genu genuinely use if executed upon correctly versus with this. I think it's very kind of vague and it's really just kind of taking the stuff you did in the core tutorials, because I think those first two ideas really go beyond the tutorials. You're going to have to do things in there that are not just like reading and writing from the database. You're going to have to have background workers and cues and all these different things. But I think this would be a really great one to focus on getting the fundamentals down, getting auth working, getting the data model working, getting the CRUD working, getting the UI working. You know, a lot of people love to kind of just dismiss these things and say that, oh, they don't matter. But like they are foundational. And yes, complicated and complicated stuff needs to be built on top of these. And especially when you're learning, these are really good apps to make. I've made many of these throughout my career, and these have ultimately led me to building bigger and better projects over time. I think the key challenges here is really just going to be coming up with the data model, getting the CRUD working, and then any more complicated things you want to add to it. You know, if you want to work on like a mobile app or something like that, figuring out how to deal with mobile app things like React Native and iOS just kind of sucking is would be a great learning experience or trying to figure out some way to deploy your back end or all these different things. If you want to use different technologies there, this is a great place to do it. And, you know, again, if you really know your niche and you really have a problem that was solved for you, which is a piece of advice I've heard from a lot of people, and it's been really great for me, is trying to build things that I personally would want to use. If this is something where it's like you go to the gym every day and you build an app that you would want to use every day and you genuinely use every day, then that's a really good sign. Um, that's something that I've gone through where like I built stuff and like I try and use it myself and I'm like, huh, I don't think I would actually use this because I'm not actually using it, which means it's probably not that great and it's not going to go anywhere. So there's definitely potential here and it is fully up to you to realize that potential.